हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू जे इंग्लिश विद अन अकेडमी इंडिया लीडिंग एंड लार्जेस्ट टेस्ट प्रिपरेशन एंड लर्निंग प्लेटफॉर्म एंड गाइस वी हैव मेड दिस जे इंग्लिश चैनल फॉर यू सो दैट वी कैन डिलीवर कंटेंट एक्सक्लूसिवली एंड एक्सक्लूसिवली इन इंग्लिश फॉर योर जेई प्रिपरेशन एंड टेस्ट प्रिपरेशन एंड दिस इज द नेशन फर्स्ट चैनल दैट इज डिलीवरिंग कंटेंट एक्सक्लूसिवली इन इंग्लिश फॉर योर जेई प्रिपरेशन एंड नॉट ओनली दैट गाइस वी हैव बेस्ट इन क्लास एजुकेटर्स ऑन दिस चैनल एंड ऑन एन अकेडमी so what are you thinking about click on that subscribe button and click on that little notification button to get timely updates and guys you know what today we are going to explore current and electricity current and electricity is of course a very interesting topic and it also carries very easy scores for your exam it's a very easy scoring topic and if you know it you can you know solve much of your paper even without putting efforts that is what current and electricity is all about and the conceptual questions are going to be very very easy and if you are a hustler you need it guys this is one of the most interesting topics that we are going to explore in physics and guys you will enjoy it and let me tell you what are you thinking about when i'm talking about current and electricity probably your fans probably the light probably you know like all this you know electrical instruments but not only that guys even you know like your electronic instruments like your mobile phone your laptop the tablet on which you are watching this video everything has current and electricity involved in it and even if you are a medical profession you are going to de deal with current and electricity every day in your ecgs and other electrical equipments and guys stay tuned enjoy this classes this is something very interesting and you know what today we are going to go through the bits and pieces of current and electricity and guys let me tell you a little bit about myself before we get into this topic i am murli daran i am i completed my ms in electrical engineering from university of colorado boulder with my ms in electrical engineering so i know this topic really well and i will show you how to you know deal with this topic it's a very easy topic and you do not require any prerequisites for it and i'm also an iitian i have four plus years of experience preparing students for iit and other competitive exams i have filed 22 plus patent applications in india us and canada and guys today we are going to explore current and electricity we are going to take it from the basics until the depth and you are going to enjoy it guys stay tuned current and electricity is everywhere guys it is there every day you are dealing with it every day you it is there pretty much everywhere and you have been dealing with it for the past decade for the past decade it's all about current and electricity you are not living without any electronic or electrical equipments and even before that guys so it's a very interesting topic enjoy it and guys myself and an academy have something interesting for you today that's our telegram you know like channel j english you can go on to you know play store on app store download the telegram app and you can just type in t.me slash j e e underscore english and you will get timely updates on our classes our video books and etc this is one one place where you will get everything and without you know any hassle and what are you thinking about guys go and download this app and you know what join our channel telegram channel j underscore english t.me dot slash j j english and guys myself and an academy have something interesting for you that's our an academy learning app where you can attend free live special classes with the top notch educators in india and guys go on to play play store and app store and download our app and you will get also timely updates on our special classes and guys if you are preparing for test and if you are looking for some interesting platform that is our we have a subscription platform where you can get live quizzes you will get you know like competitive quizzes where you are competing with everyone in this nation and not only that guys we also have doubt clearing sessions with our top notch educators live sessions with our top notch educators you can assess yourself as and when you keep moving towards this test and guys if you are in 9th 10th or 11th class you may want to get the 24 month subscription which hardly cost 1500 per month and if you're looking for like a 12 month subscription you must be in a long term or dropout it also costs hardly only 2500 per month and if you're on lockdown if you're looking for some place to get this all this ed educational material like 6000 on odd education material for your preparation then we have this one and three month subscription which you can get it for hardly 6000 or 5000 per month and you know what you can apply only live and get a 10% instant discount And guys, that's it, guys. This is one of these awesome platforms where you get all this education content in one place. It's a one-stop solution for all your JEE preparation. And guys, let me get into the topic of the day: current and electricity. But before that, we'll have a quote from one of the pioneers, or the best pioneers in current and electricity. That's Faraday, the father of current and electricity. He said that, but 
try for who knows what is possible what does this mean this means keep trying guys keep trying who knows what is possible beat your exams beat your something hustling for beat you're doing anything keep trying and this effort will pay back guys keep trying and you know what you do not know what you can do tomorrow what wonders and amazing things you can do tomorrow and guys subscribe to our j english channel to get timely updates and like this video guys and we'll get into the topic of the day current and electricity so we are talking about current so what are you thinking when we are talking about current so it's basically the rate of flow of charges what do i mean by rate of flow of charges it is the change in charges with respect to time that is current guys it's one of those you know like fundamental physical quantities this is one of those fundamental physical quantities which we have been using to assess all this you know things in our daily life and basically the definition is like the rate of flow of charge through any cross section is called current in simple terms it is basically the rate of flow of charges through any cross sectional area and you see in this you know like awesome like picture where this electrons are flowing in this way but the current is in this direction okay so this rate of flow of any charges i mean any charges be it electrons or any other charges this will cause current and the direction of current is going to be in the direction of positive charges or in the opposite direction of negative charges so in this case if the electrons was flowing in this direction then the current is going to be in this direction and current is a scalar quantity and but it has something interesting to it and you know what current in in you know in like in current the electrons are not moving so smoothly as you are thinking it is traveling of course but not as much as you are thinking why we'll see in this lecture and current is you know like the si unit of current is amperes and you can express it even in terms of other si as other you know like units but amperes is one of the standard one and how do you derive current it's basically dq by dt or delta q by delta t it's basically rate of flow of charges so you're basically going to find the differential of charges with respect to time and what have i written over here what do i mean by e into delta n by delta t so i'm basically knowing the number of charges flowing at any particular instant and then i am multiplying it with the value of charges and dividing i mean the value of that single charge and then dividing it by time so what does this mean when i'm talking about i i also said you delta q by delta t which means rate of flow of charges with respect to time what does this e into delta n by delta t mean e into delta n by delta t tells me that there is these many number of charges flowing per second or per any unit time and then multiplying it with e tells me the real change in charges i mean there should be a coulomb change in charge so for that you have to multiply it with e you got this point i guess and guys keep writing it down this is an easy chapter it's independent of anything and you know what you can you can easily score in this particular topic it's very very easy and when i'm talking about average current i'm not taking at that instant i'm probably taking it over a time frame so when i'm talking about delta q by delta t and dq by dt there is a difference so dq by dt when the time tends to zero so or the delta q by delta t where the time tends to zero becomes instantaneous current so instantaneous current means the current at that instant you put an ammeter on the wire like in this case there is this you know like electrons flowing through all this electrical circuits you basically put an ammeter probe on it and you try to measure the current at the particular second like just that moment that is known as instantaneous current whereas average current is where you are assessing how much charges are flowing over a time of period i mean over a period of time you are assessing the amount of charges flowing through that a wire or it can be any conductor anything 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 basically sometimes it can be also solutions but in instantaneous what you are doing is you are just putting in that probe and assessing what is that current at that moment so mathematically what you do is you would write delta q by delta t and you will make sure that delta t tends to zero okay so you see over here i have written over here i instantaneous is equal to limit delta t tends to zero delta q by delta t which means the time the time in the denominator that instant is going to be zero delta q means change in time that there is no i mean there is no change in time that is what we are assuming at that moment 
So delta q by delta delta q by delta t, where delta t tends to zero is instantaneous current, or you can basically differentiate any given equation to derive the instantaneous current. And for average current or current in any case, what you do is you find out the amount of charges flowing per unit time through any cross-sectional area. So let's say like you know 10 coulombs was flowing for 10 seconds through this particular through this particular cross section then you would write it down as 10 coulombs by 10 seconds whereas for instantaneous current it can be that 8 coulombs is flowing at you know fifth second then you'll assume that at that time the current was like at the fifth second for that one second if it was 8 coulombs then it was 8 amperes so there is a difference between instantaneous current because current might be varying you know many of the times and like even in AC cases there are there is current that is going to be varying with time and similarly even in some DC cases the current is varying with time this is some internal properties of you know like the electrons and guys you know what there is there is a difference between instantaneous current and average current and average current is the flow of amount of charge per unit time or sorry for the total amount of time whereas instantaneous current is charge flown at that instant I mean the change in charge flow at that instant that is known as instantaneous current and the SI unit of current is amperes and current is a scalar quantity even though it has a direction. So understand this point guys current has a direction isn't it like in this case I told you electrons are flowing in this direction along the wire but current has a direction which is opposite to the flow of electrons. I just want to make this point clear again the direction of current is opposite to the flow of electrons and current is the rate of flow of charge per unit time or the rate of flow of charge itself means flow of charge per unit time through any cross section and this is about current guys now we will understand current like from a simulation how it looks like and how do we determine the direction of current so I told you you know like there is a direction for current so let's say if electrons are flowing in this direction Okay, so the electrons are going to get attracted to the positive terminal since it's a negative charged particle. It will flow from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. If this is the direction, if this is the direction, okay guys, this is the direction. If this is the direction of flow of electrons, like in this case, what you're seeing below, like here the electrons are flowing, right? In this direction, then that means the direction of current is like this okay because the current is assumed to be along the flow of direction of positive particles okay positively charged particles electrons is negatively charged so if electrons are flowing like this current would flow like this and current would flow from negative to positive terminal since it's a negatively charged particles it is going to get attracted to the positive terminal keep this point very clear in mind okay guys now this is the confuse me challenge problem where you know like we are going to confuse you but as well as understand things better so the entire objective of confuse me challenge problem every time that i come with a confuse me challenge problem that means you're trying to understand new concepts in this subject or something that may appear in your exam how they are trying to confuse you and guys i want you to be attentive and not only that i want you to be active during this moment you should be like completely interactive either comment or you know either write on your notebook probably comment and understand what is going wrong and learn from your mistake guys if you don't learn from your mistake you are not progressing so keep on learning from your mistakes and I try to understand this concept, you know, sometimes the confuse me challenge problem, I might have not even introduced the concept and I'm coming up with the confuse me challenge problem. At that moment, what I'm trying to do is like, I'm trying to shape your concepts and you have to write it down. You have to make use of your intuition, write it down. And then, you know what, you must see whether you must validate yourself, whether it is going right or wrong. If it is going wrong, then you have to correct yourself. If it's going right, you have to see whether your reasoning is correct. Okay. You have to see whether your reasoning is correct. That is also very important to understand any concept in physics. All right. So the confused me challenge problem one. What causes the current? Flow of electrons, flow of positive ions, flow of atoms and flow of negative ions. What do you think is the answer guys? Take you know like two seconds, think about it and write down the answers either in the comment section or you know like on your notebook and think about it and think about it, think about it and think about it. 
Guys, what did I say? Current is rate of flow of charges. So what can make current to flow? It can be electrons. It can be any negative ions. It can be any positive ions. And atoms, if it's a neutral atom, it's a no. If it's a charged atom, yes. Okay, guys, you got, got this point, right? So what causes the flow of, I mean like the flow of current or the current is the flow of any kind of charged particles. It's not necessarily electrons, but we are going to learn exclusively and more, you know, about electrons. But generally, when they are talking about current, they are talking about any kind of charged ions or, you know, charged particles. This may come in your exam sometimes to just test your fundamentals about current or like, you know, current and electricity. Let's get into the challenge problem number two. This is very intuitive. This is the concept that we have gone through right now. Calculate the instantaneous current at time t is equal to zero. So that they are specifically talking about instantaneous current at time t is equal to zero. Given the charge is varying with time as q is equal to 2t squared plus 3 coulomb. Okay guys, this is coulomb. So it's 2t squared plus 3 coulomb. So they're talking about instantaneous current, current at that moment. So what would you do? Simply differentiate it. You don't even have to put your pen on the paper for such easy kind of problems. If you see a problem like this, which is just about differentiation and it has a constant attached to it. And you know what? You have to differentiate and substitute the value of time. Don't put your pen on the paper. Just do it in your mind. So what would it be? dq by dt would be 2 differentiation of 2t squared plus 3. That would be 2 into 2t. That would be 4t. Because 3 is a constant that would become 0 during differentiation. So it would be 4t. Then substitute the time t is equal to 2. You will get 8 amperes. So these were the options given. You must have known by now like whether you have marked the correct or the wrong answer. And guys, keep doing it. Keep doing it. If you are preparing for exam, you know, you must keep doing it. If you are hustling, that's well and great. But if you are preparing for exam, keep doing it along with me. Be it if you are doing it mentally or you are writing it down or however you are doing it, just keep doing these problems. And it is very important you keep on practicing for any kind of competitive exams. You know, it is not just about learning and knowing the concepts very well. It's also about you know, doing it in time, doing it at that moment. At that moment, they'll try to confuse you. In fact, I'll talk about one of these problems that appeared in JE Advanced like 2016, where they were just trying to, you know, just confuse you using this problem. There was nothing in it. There was nothing. It's a very, very easy problem. And it was carrying like, you know, four marks that would make your rank jump somewhere, you know. Like that four marks would create a huge difference of like 200, 300, sometimes in 1000, 2000, 20,000 ranks. I mean, not 20,000 necessarily, like 1000 ranks sometimes. But... We will see at such problems where they are trying to just confuse you and there are like many such you know confuse me problems in JE like around let's say like 10 problems in physics or like even some 5 to 10 problems where they are just it's basically conceptually oriented problems that there where sometimes they are trying to confuse you and you should be very careful about this beat you are preparing for any competitive exams and look at it carefully and guys next problem calculate the value of current from the given graph. Come on guys, keep writing down the answers. So the options are given as 4 ampere, 1 ampere, 0 ampere and 2 ampere. The graph is something like this. This is the first thing you have to notice. They are talking about current. Okay. So this is a graph between charge Q and time T. So how is this charge varying with time? It's constant. It is basically constant. The charge is not at all varying with time. Okay. I mean, let's say it has been given that the charge is constant, which means the amount of charge is not changing in, you know, like any place with respect to time. Then what is the current going to be? Zero amperes? Isn't it guys? It's really a simple question, isn't it? It should be zero amperes when there is no slope. You know, when there is a slope, that means the charges are changing with respect to time. And here the charges are constant. But remember this, this point guys, in a cross section, the charges are flowing continuously. The amount of charges accumulated, you know, is going to be the same as the amount of charges flown. If some amount of charges leaving this place, 
leaving this compartment then those amount of charges are going to enter this is in a case where we are not you know exclusively talking about conductors we talking about some instance some space where the charges are varying with time okay guys if they talked about conductor then you may not know it's constant current and calculate the value of the current from the given graph a similar one calculate the value of current from the given graph 0 amperes 1 ampere 4 ampere 2 ampere ampere is the si unit of current and here in the graph it is given as if you know charges changing with respect to time at that place the charge is not remaining constant that means some amount of charge is entering in this case it's positive maybe it's even exiting and they are you know saying that at some so it's a straight line it's a straight line slope that's what is given to us and they are marking some point where it is 2 and 2 okay there is 2 and 2 okay guys that would mean the slope is 1 dq by dt or the instantaneous current is going to be 1 ampere got it guys it's really easy right wasn't it very very easy all right but you know what these kind of problems are something that you may not expect in je but you'll get these kind of problems very easily in rest of the competitive exams this is a easy one this is just a confuse me challenge problem it is measured that 10 to the power 21 electrons are passing through an area through an area for 2 seconds so there are 10 to the power 21 electrons that are flowing through an area for 2 seconds what is the magnitude of current in this case guys think about it think about it and think about it i am talking about 10 to the power 21 electrons in fact we spoke about this concept guys so they are not saying 10 to the power 21 coulomb they are talking about 10 to the power 21 electrons so what is the value of the charge 10 to the power 21 is number of electrons so you are going to multiply it with the value of charge of electrons that is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 into 10 to the power 21 that is going to yield you 1.6 into 100 which is nothing but 160 160 but divided by time 2 seconds because there is a constant flow of charges it is measured that the electrons pass through an area for 2 seconds that is i am mean, they are asking you the magnitude of current for that instant so that is that is going to be 160 by 2 80 coulombs okay guys easy easy very easy like you know like a 2 minutes or a half a minute problem if once you understood this it's, it's literally a half a minute problem but in a competitive exams you are getting like 2 3 marks and even if you are doing some experiments in your lab you are understanding why we are doing this problem because we are talking about flow of charges you are not talking about static charges so in current electricity we are not talking about static charges we are talking about charges in motion so that's the beauty of current so in current you are studying the phenomena or studying the physics of flow of charges it's a very interesting topic now the the charges are not ready to you know remind that In that in that particular place at the particular instant they want to move around and that is where it starts all right guys another confuse me challenge problem it is measured that a net charge of magnitude of that electrons with a net charge of magnitude of 9 coulomb is measured between q and p for 18 seconds okay guys for 18 seconds this 9 coulomb is flowing from q to p and the current okay which of the following are true okay then which of the following are true okay so what they are talking about over here they are talking about two things one is they are asking you the magnitude of the current and the other one is they are asking you the direction of current if you notice the options carefully it's 0.5 amperes flowing from q to p or it's 1 ampere flowing from p to q and similarly 0.5 amperes flowing from p to q and 9 amperes flowing from q to p so the total time taken is 18 seconds and 9 coulombs have flown 
from from P to Q actually, isn't it? Have a look at this figure. Current has flown from P to Q and the electrons are flowing in the direction of Q to P. Isn't it guys? Isn't it students like where is the current flowing? Like in which direction is the current flowing? Electrons are flowing from Q to P then you know current would flow from P to Q. And 9 coulomb is the charge transferred in 18 seconds that means it's simple 0.5 amperes but there are two options which one would be the correct one they are saying then which one of the following is true they're talking about current 0.5 amperes they're not talking about you know like charges or electrons they're talking about current so it's 0.5 amperes and the current is flowing from p to q so this one would be the correct one okay 0.5 amperes is flowing from P to Q since the direction of electrons is from Q to P. Critically and critically observe this and understand it. Alright guys, now we will get into another like you know confuse me challenge problem. It is about a charge E moves in a circle with a constant speed of V in the circle with a radius R. So you know what this charge is moving in a circle with a constant speed V in a circle with radius R. Okay guys, imagine it as if the charge is moving in a circle, circle and circle. It keeps on moving in the circle with velocity, I mean sorry, with speed V and uh, this, this is of radius R, this circle's radius R. Then we need to find the value of current. In fact, this is one of those problems that, that appeared previously in J. Then find the value of current. One simple thing you can do is you can basically equate, you know, I mean, let's not look at the options and let's just start solving the problem. So let's say now I need to find out the value of current. And I know this charge E is flowing in a, in a loop, in a loop of radius R with a constant speed V. So what would be the time period? First, you need to understand the time period to solve this problem. You should not approach it the other way around. I think one of the options is missing over here because, you know, if you, if you match simply the, uh, you know, units, you'd come to know there is no such option that is matching this problem. Okay, guys. So, it's simply we'll do it. We need not worry about what is there given in the options. So, it's a charge E flowing in a circle with radius r. So the radius is r. Okay guys, the radius is r. Okay. The radius is r. Which means it is going through this 2 pi r. Okay. And the time period would be v by 2 pi r. Okay guys, it should be V by 2 pi R. So none of these answers are correct actually. There should be a none of these, you know, option. And then what is happening is, this would become equal to, you know, 1 by T. And what would be the charge flown in the time? E. So it's E by T, which is going to be E into V by 2 pi R. So none of them was answers. One way of doing it is just basically do some dimensional analysis. You know, from dimensional analysis, you'll come to know that these are not the correct answers. Because pi r square has double, you know, uh, you know, like there, there would be like a meter. So it would be like coulomb meter. So that does not make sense. Just coulomb does not make sense for current. And then, you know, like, uh, like coulomb into, uh, I mean, coulomb into time also does not make sense because it is coulomb per time. So none of these is the answer. And it would be E by T, E into V, V where V is this, you know, like the speed in that circle to complete the entire, you know, like the loop and 2 pi R is the circumference of that circle. So it would be E by 2 pi R into V should be the answer. 
Okay, guys, you got this concept, right? This is this may not, you know, make much sense as as and when we keep moving into this, you know, topic because this is where they are just talking about, you know, velocity and telling you, you know, like the radius of the circle. But this is like, you know, just an ideal problem or like, you know, ideal assumption where a charge is moving with some velocity. Then we find out the time period. Then we take a cross section. So there is this charge flowing, but this charge is appearing in the circle at a single instant only, right? You need to find out the time period of that instant. You are not going to find out the time period for the entire, you know, like the uh, rotation or let's call that circular motion. But here you are concerned about in that particular unit area or like, you know, in that particular cross section, the charge is going to appear after V by 2 pi R time period. Isn't it guys? If I'm, if I'm moving with velocity or if you're moving in the car with the velocity V or like, you know, magnitude of velocity V or speed V, then you're rotating in the circle. When would you reach this point again? You'd reach this point again when you would come back over there. To come back over there, if you're traveling with speed V, you know, the distance to cover is 2 pi R. So you'd come after like, you know, some time like V are like 2 pi R by V. But the time period is V by 2 pi R. So the total, like, you know, the total charge, if you assume that car was a charge, then in that case, what would happen? The time period would become like V by 2 pi R and the current would become E into V by 2 pi R because the magnitude of charge in this case is E. If given Q, then it would be Q. Okay, guys, wasn't it really like, you know, simple and wasn't really intuitive? It was really intuitive, I guess, like it was, you know, little, little they have confused you over the, over the concept that it is moving with speed V. So what is going to happen? So you, you will have to imagine the point, you know, where this charge is trying to, where this charge is trying to appear over the time period. Okay. It's about up, like appearing over the time period. You got this point, I guess, because this is, this is one of those concepts that might be asked in your exams many times, but people are trying to think about, you know, typical conductor based problems where they are saying, Oh, this charge is moving with velocity V. So I'll, I'll just substitute it for drift velocity. There you'll go, go wrong. You know what? There the things will go wrong. In this case, the options are very simple. One of the options is in fact not given. I think it's a typo error. Guys do apologize me. I think the last option was none of the above. Since the units doesn't match, you can do it that way, but that is not the correct way of doing. Try to understand this concept. When this charge is moving the circle at particular instant, this charge is crossing this cross sectional area or this point in time. So that time would be like V by two. I mean like the time period would be V by two pi R and two pi R by V would be the time period. So exactly understand this concept. It's very important. It's very critical that you understand this concept. This now by now you must have got, you know, a gist of what is you know, how to derive current, what is current, if really a charge is moving, if you, if, you, if someone talks about charges moving like this, charges moving like that, then you're, you, when you're assessing current, you're, you're assessing the time period. You're not really, you know, assessing the flow of charges at a position, but rather the time period because it's at an instant or it's over a time of, like over time period or something like that. I hope you got this point very, very clearly, very, very clearly, because this is something that you need to understand. In this case, this ball, I mean, this charge is moving like this in the circle, which was like around R radius. Then at particular instant of time, it is only appearing over here. Okay, guys, at particular instant of time, only it is appearing over here at this point. It's not appearing all throughout the time. It is only appearing at a particular instant time. After a complete, you know, uh, like circular motion or a complete uh, of after completion of the circumference, it is appearing at this point. I think it is very clear. Let's move on to the next one. So this is a very interesting concept. This is like the truth in like, you know, electricity. So when we are talking about electricity, we are talking about charges, the flow of charges, rate of flow of charges to be more precise. And what does the rate of flow of charges tell you? Like, can there be a position in a conductor where the charges are not conserved? Of course, no. Charges are always conserved. Even if you take things universally, charges are conserved. Charges cannot be created or destroyed. You know, if you're creating a negative charge, there would be a positive charge. So this is, this is the concept that you need to grasp for your, you know, fundamental understanding that Charges cannot be created or destroyed. Charges are always conserved in a conductor. If a charge lives someplace, then there should be a charge accumulation over there. Okay. And 
the total number of charges in an isolated system never ever changes okay guys the total number of charges or the total electric charge in an isolated system never ever changes carefully understand this point and charge conservation principle states that in an isolated system the flow of charge into and out of the region should be same okay guys so let's take up this one particular concept and we'll understand what it looks like of course you are you are looking from the bulb you see this electrons going in it's written over here then it also comes out and there is a battery creating this potential difference to drive this electrons we will talk about it we'll talk about it how this electrons behave inside you know a conductor when a potential difference is applied but let's take you know like an you know an hypothetical scenario where 10 amperes is flowing in at this particular point so we are concerned about a specific point in the space where that would be this isn't it so it is 10 amperes in this direction and then 10 amperes in this direction so at this particular instant i mean at this particular point 10 amperes is flowing in and 10 amperes is also flowing in then 20 amperes should come out isn't it guys because the charge is conserved if the charge is conserved it's an isolated system and if 10 amperes is flowing in 10 amperes is flowing in from this side and this side then 20 amperes should come out let's say x and x then 2x should come out this in fact clears your concept of current is not a vector see if i have to conserve the charge with respect to you know uh, time then current is not a vector so if, if this is at an angle if this, this is at certain angle like you know 30 degrees this wire is at certain angle 30 degrees to this line and this is at 45 degrees angle then what would be the magnitude the magnitude through this wire would be different isn't it through this wire would not be 20 amperes it would be something less because there would be a you know like a uh, a uh, parallel component and a perpendicular component or an x and a y component and these would divide this current into like you know two different quantities or two different depending on angle two different quantities of different magnitudes so that would ultimately make sure that the charge is not conserved but we know it's a universal truth that in an isolated system charge is always conserved If you take this universe as an isolated system, the charges conserved. You can never create or destroy the charges. So in this case, what is happening? Charge is being conserved. So it cannot be a vector quantity. It's a scalar quantity, guys. Current does not follow the vector addition rule or the law of vector addition. Okay, guys. You cannot. You should not resolve the current. You should not. Should not resolve the current. Current is not a vector. In fact, it's a dot product of two. vector quantities it's a dot product of two vector quantities guys okay guys so current as a direction current cannot be resolved into vector components okay and current does not follow you know that current cannot be resolved means current can, does not follow the law of vector addition this point must be clear to you how did we understand why current cannot follow the vector addition and why current is not you know vector it is not vector guys it's really that simple it's a scalar quantity you just keep on adding any current in any nodes okay it was a really simple thing to understand that current is not a vector what is current how do we calculate current given any you know like any kind of problem so expect that you know basics around current would not go beyond this but now we will understand current from a very different perspective but before that again we'll do a confuse me challenge problem guys or i think it's a conservation of charge problem but this also confuse me challenge problem if you carefully notice it so the 10 amperes is flowing in and there is an 8 amperes flowing in this in this part you know from <clears throat> from these i mean 8 amperes is flowing over there then find the value of x where x is the current okay so what is happening over here how do you find out the x you have to conserve the charge so like let's say just for an instant 10 amperes flowed in and there is like 8 amperes flowing out that means 10 amperes has flown in 8 amperes has flowed out 
that means 2 amperes is going to be x because both are flowing out isn't it guys isn't it like 8 amperes is flowing out x is also flowing out 10 amperes was flowing in that means x is equal to 2 the charges should be conserved in an isolated system when it's coming in going out so notice this you know direction of current carefully it's important that you notice the direction of current properly when you're given simple questions like this that means they are going to confuse you especially in a je if you're getting a simple problem that means they have already confused you so you must understand that point very very critically that when you are given very simple problem in je advance that means they are confusing you because this is this is not you know like a very tough problem for anyone anyone who's having a look at this class anyone who's learning from you know like from us you know that this is not a tough problem at all this is a very easy problem this is something you know that you do it in your secondary classes but they have asked you this problem what does this mean they're just trying to confuse you so it should be like two amperes guys okay 10 amperes is flowing in 8 amperes is flowing out then again x x amperes is also flowing out then it should be two amperes so now let's understand the current better. Of course, of course, I know you are looking at the simulation where the electrons are flowing, appearing, disappearing, appearing, disappearing. What is happening over there? What is happening over here? What is happening when I'm talking about the flow of current? The charge is accumulating, deaccumulating, accumulating, deaccumulating. Rather, I should say deaccumulating, accumulating, accum deaccumulating, accumulating. Which means in particular, in any particular cross section, the charges that leave also comes in. Okay guys, the charge that leaves, let's take this as an isolated system. Then the charge is coming in. Okay, I mean let's say the charge is leaving, the charge is deaccumulating, then the charge should come in. Similarly, the charge is coming in, it is leaving. Charge is coming in, it is leaving. Okay guys, this is something that you, you should understand very carefully. But we are going to have a very very different perspective on current like never you had before. You know, we have been reading all about this V is equal to IR current specifications etc and etc. But what does exactly current, how does current exactly behave? Is there some vector quantity that defines current? That is what we are going to answer now. Okay guys, so actually if you think about current, Current is like you know a scalar quantity which is flowing but it is dependent on two vector quantities. One is area vector and the other one is current density vector. Okay, if, if, if it's a new concept to you get it that there is some vector known as you know current density vector on which you know this current is dependent. Okay guys, so basically current is nothing but a dot product of two vector quantities. One is current density and the other is area vector. An area vector as a direction perpendicular to the area, perpendicular to the cross section through which the electrons flow or through which the any kind of charged ions or charges flow. So if this is the cross section, if this is the area, if this particular circle of, if this cross section of the cylinder is the area, then the area vector would be perpendicular to the surface. So if this is the area, then the area vector would be in this direction. Okay guys, if this is the area, area vector would be in this direction. Okay, so you understood area vector. So what is this current density? Okay, before that we'll just have a look at a relationship between you know current and current density. Because we are talking about current then we should also understand the relationship between current and current density. We are talking about current in terms of current density that means we need to understand the relationship between current and current density. So it says that I is equal to integral of n cap dot j dA. Okay. So what you're doing over here. So if you know the current density in any particular cross section, or let's say this is the cross section. If you know the current density, then you would calculate it for every single elemental area, every small area, every, every, every inch of that area, every, 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 the nanometer, what, like, whatever you call it, every single, you know, part of that area, nanometer square, I should have been saying because it is area. So what you would do is like, you would calculate the particular, you know, like current density and then multiply it with also the area vector. I mean, like take a dot product of that area vector and you will calculate the current. And you will add all such elements, all such, you know, current density into area vector elements for every single small unit area. And then you will get the current. 
okay i know there's a new perspective on understanding current but isn't it awesome like why current is a scalar we have so many reasons for current to be scalar all right guys so now if i take this you know dot product it's going to be cos theta if cos theta is zero it's basically going to be jda okay it's a dot product isn't it i is equal to j dot da in that case it is going to be j cos theta da integral of j cos theta da so what you are doing for current you are integrating you are actually you know summing up you are calculating the entire you know like the current or let's say the current density into area and if there is a component then you take you will make use of that component because only perpendicular things matter in this case do understand that if there is you know we'll talk about that if there is an inclination of you know like the area then what would we do and if there is you know like uh like let's say the field itself is having particular but before that we will explore what is current density because we have started talking about current density it is critical that we understand current density and we will first explore what is this directions to understand current density so i told you like you know current has a flow and it has a direction so how do you denote this direction on a paper or let's say on this you know presentation or on any video like this or like any other place like how do you define the, is there any standard for defining this direction okay if i put an arrow like this you know that the direction is this but what about current so you generally use a dot or an x to denote the direction of or the flow of current it's a convention guys and the thing is if it's outward what you do is you denote it with a dot just like this blue over here blue dot over here and if it is inside the conductor or if it's inside any surface then you do in x okay if it is in inward direction you do x if it is in outward direction for you in this case if it is outward direction then you do dot if it's in the inward direction if it is inside this plane then you do an x okay guys if it is inside this plane it is an x if it is outside this plane it's a dot it's a convention guys it's a convention which means the standard convention that you are looking at every single time okay guys if they are going to ask you to assess the direction of current or they they make they make you something different you know like they will give you like the direction of the current but denote it with an x or a dot and they will give you some area and they will ask you to find out the current density and there you will notice that they would have given like you know like a direction of current density in maybe in i cap j cap as well then in that case what would you do you would make use of the sign conventions to find out the direction and x means inward guys x means inwards dot means outwards okay guys i hope this is clear now we'll get into the concept of like one of the concept of understanding how to derive current density and we'll get into current density after this so let's say there is a current so now what we are going to do is we are assuming there is a constant current density okay there is a constant current density and then we'll find out what is the current okay so this is the rod where a cross sectional area is given to us there is a cross sectional area given to us and in this the electrons are flowing there are accumulate de accumulating accumulating de accumulating accumulating de accumulating accumulating and now they are asking you to find out the current there is a constant j current density is denoted by j there is a constant j and then now you need to find out the current so how do you do this you will take each elemental area if at all the current density is constant then it is not varying you can directly multiply with area it's a very simple way of doing it but what would be the process what is the typical process that you are going to follow when you are going to derive current given a constant current density then what you do do is you would take the dot product of area vector and current density and then integrate it for each elemental area or for the each teeny mini piece of pieces of that area so da in this case is going to be 2 by r dr because this is this is like you know i just make it a another color guys so just a moment uh so this is hmm let's use red then see this 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 circle this small element that i'm talking about is da what would be the area of da 
2 pi r is the circumference let's assume it is you know there is a d i mean dr you know thickness of, which is varying with you know just the uh, sub, circumference or the radius of that elemental area so the da is going to be 2 pi r dr so the area is going to be 2 pi r dr for that elemental area and then you are going to multiply or take a dot product of the da with j in this case it is given dot have you noticed this dot okay guys have you noticed this dot this means the current is flowing in or flowing out flowing out isn't it guys current is flowing in the outward direction current is flowing in the outward direction Okay, but in this case, maybe it's not very relevant. But I'm just showing you how the signs are given. So we are going to basically multiply two pi r dr, which is nothing but that elemental area, into the constant current density. And also, if you take a dot product, you'll get a cos theta. And the cos theta in this case is going to be, you know, like one because theta is zero. And then you would get two pi r dr. because now see current is flowing in this direction or let's say in this direction and the area vector is also in the direction right perpendicular to the surface of that particular any given plane or given surface so it would be in this area both of them would be in this in this place then what would be the dot product the dot product would be 1 i mean the cos theta of the, the cos component of the dot product would be 1 if both are in the same direction So it would be j into two pi r dr, where you are integrating it from zero to r. Let's assume the entire radius of this cylinder, the cylinder as a radius of r. Then you are doing, you know, zero to r. And now that being said, if you integrate it, it is same as multiplying it by j into pi r square. You could have simply, you know, at the instant you knew that you know current density is constant, you could have just multiplied it with, you know. by r square just like you know how would you do it for like you know volume density so if you take the analogy of you know volume density it would be clear but in that case it's meter cube in this case it's meter square current density we are talking about per unit area okay guys volume we are talking about meter cube whereas here we are talking about area you could have simply multiplied j into pi r square or you could have done this in exams you don't want to do this but for understanding you may want to do this and if you get a problem where the current density is varying with you know area i mean like with particular radius area anything then in that case you would make use of this kind of you know derivation or this kind of method okay guys now let's get into the current density okay until now we have been reading about current as the you know the standard now we will understand it the other way around we will understand it from a place where current density is the standard for current then the things would look awesome things would look different then the things would be more you know comprehensible so let's say what is current what is current density guys we until now we are making use of current density even without talking about current density but what is current density current density is nothing but charge per unit time per unit area and it is a vector it has a direction See in this case, you are seeing this thing glowing, 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 and glowing. What is happening? It is basically like you know, a, a, like an animation showing you the change in current density. It is showing you the change in current density. Like I'm, if let's assume blue is the you know peak or red is the peak, then it is changing with time. So if charges are you know deaccumulating and accumulating or accumulating and deaccumulating, then in that case you are noticing a current density, a current density because charges are flowing, which means current is also flowing, which means there is a current density. If current has to flow, there has to be a current density. Okay, guys, there has to be a particular medium. Sometimes it can be air, but anyway, there has to be a particular medium. But again. you see that like there is a current density which is making it happen so now you are going to for some you know moment understand current density but current density as the base for current generation okay guys so what is current density what is what is what is current density current density is the amount of charge that flows per unit time per unit area so you are not worried about area specifically in current density in, in current density can vary from particular region to region in some cases they do even vary from region to region and we will even have a look at problems that where you know this current density is varying from region to region 
But the thing about current density is, it is nothing but charge per unit time per unit area or the rate of flow of charge per unit area. And it's a vector quantity, it has magnitude, direction and every property of a vector. Okay. And what is the direction of current density? Direction of flow of current is going to define the direction of current density. Basically, to be more precise, the direction of flow of charges will tell you the direction of current density. So, direction of flow of charges will tell you the direction of current density, guys. It's a vector quantity whose direction is in the motion of positive charges. So, what does this mean? Current density should be in the direction of flow of positive charges. If you take negative charges, the current density is going to be in the opposite direction, just like current. Just like current, if you take electrons, if electrons is flowing like this, then the current density will flow in this opposite direction. Okay guys, current density is a vector, current density is base for current generation. It is like, uh, you know, it, it, is, it is a vector quantity which has both direction and magnitude. Its direction is defined by the motion of charges. We have started talking about, you know, moving charges in this case. So that's why we call it electricity, current and electricity. So we are talking about current density now, which is a vector quantity defining current. Alright guys, let's have a look at some cases where, you know, like current density as a direction in on a, you know, like a surface area and how do we calculate it? You would do a simple thing to calculate current when current density is given an area. In that case, what you do is you simply take the dot product of the area vector which is going to be perpendicular to the surface and do like take a dot vector with current density and the area vector and then you would get the value of current. So what would you do if you are given, you know, like a direction of, you know, like, like, you know, like, like let's say it's, it's flowing like a, ta in a tangential direction, like, you know, like curved path, if the current density is flowing in a curved path, then in that case, how would you calculate? the value of current in that region or on that surface area. You would have to basically take the dot product of the area vector which is perpendicular to the area itself, the surface area itself and the current density. So it would be really that simple. So what I, what did I do? It's basically I said that I is equal to j, j dot a which is nothing but j a cos theta. So current is nothing but dot product of current density and area vector. Get this point guys, get this point, get this point, get this point. This will make your life easy around current density problems and you will also understand as and when we keep moving into Ohm law like how do we do and work around current and current density. So this is one of the most common cases where you would get a problem around. So that was like a case, you know, where we understood if given a direction of, you know, like in I cap and J cap, I've given you the direction of, you know, like the current density and then asked you to calculate current density, then that is how you do it. But in this case, let's say the current is just flowing, you know, in parallel direction or in a straight line, but the area is tilted. Okay, guys, let's say the area is tilted, like the plate is tilted or any, you know, like a pipe is tilted, then what would be the current given, you know, like what would be the current density in this case. So the value of current is given to us that it is flowing something like this and it is flowing along straight line and but the area is tilted. Sorry guys, but the area is tilted. Now in this case, the area is tilted. What would you do? What would you do? How would you solve this? What is, what is the thing that you're going to do over here? Is there something different or you can just do a dot product? You can simply do a dot product. That will also give you the answer. But now you need to calculate current density, not the current. Okay. So there is a simple way of doing it. Take the projected area. Okay. Understand this concept. The current is flowing in this direction. That means there is an angle with area. Okay, guys. If the current is flowing in this direction, then there is an angle with the surface area. Let's assume that angle as theta. Okay. Now, if there is an angle between area vector, n cap or anything you call it a cap, etc, etc with the direction of current, then you are going to find out the projected area first. Okay. It, like see, this tilted area is not changing anything. It's as if the current is only flowing along a pipe, you know, just like in a pipe. How is it flowing? It's flowing like that. 
there is not much difference because it is not covering the entire area see current is flowing in this direction right current let's say this this is this is the current that is flowing in this direction if i tilt the area let's say if i tilt the area still current is flowing in this direction so it's not covering all of that area it's only covering a part of that area the projected part of that area which is in this direction which is along the dot product of j but in this case we don't have j we are calculating current density okay guys so we would take this projected area or the area projection so if this is theta theta is the angle between area vector and the flow of direction of current or the direction of current then this would be something 90 minus theta okay guys this would be 90 minus theta and along this line sorry this line would be 90 minus theta just a moment guys oh no okay let's, let's just erase everything on this and just bring in more clarity what should be the color the color should be something like blue and let's choose a pen of blue color so okay this is still yellow let's do pen let's choose a blue color this is the direction of flow of current now this is the area vector which is making angle theta okay guys now this should be something like this and this should be see if you carefully look at this problem if you draw this this is 90 minus theta okay if this angle is 90 minus theta how much would this be guys this would be theta because area vector is perpendicular to the area itself and this would become theta alternating i mean like these are like you know from the triangle law you know if this one is theta this one is theta alternating angles right so this is theta okay this angle was theta now what i did was i took a 90 degrees along the direction of you know perpendicular to the direction of current flow and that was 90 minus theta and if that was 90 minus theta let me take highlighter guys uh, let's say this was theta then direction perpendicular to the flow of current is 90 minus theta and let's say now what i did was i took this area vector okay which is perpendicular to the area and join these angles so this entire thing should be 90 degrees so this should be theta isn't it guys this should be theta if this is theta this is theta that means the projected area would be a cos theta in this case i put in a mod because i am assuming area vector so we are just talking about projection of area and when we are talking about you know like when we are dividing this particular thing then we are we know that see two things we can do is like just find out the magnitude of current density or as also find out the magnitude uh, direction of current density because we know the direction of current density is in the direction of flow of ch positive charges or let's say in, in common terminology charges but if you are talking about negative charges if electron is flowing like this current density is flowing like this so we can apply the direction as well but in this case we are specifically talking about magnitude of current density so it's if the projected area is a cos theta what would be the current density i by a cos theta or i by the projected area or the perpendicular area in some cases you can say, say it as perpendicular area okay guys i hope this concept is clear how we got the theta etc and etc it's a very very easy concept sometimes people do get confused around this projected area concept but why is it so because if current is flowing perpendicular 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 it makes sense but if it is tilted at some angle still it is only flowing perpendicular right still it is only hitting that that you know projected area that you know perpendicular area to the current it is not taking care of the area that is parallel to the current it is only concerned about the area that is perpendicular to the current so these were like two kind of things that would generally come across when they are talking about projected area etc and etc now let's solve a problem around current density so find the electric current find the electric current 
थ्रू अ सिलेंड्रिकल वायर ऑफ लेंथ एल एंड रेडियस आर गिवन करंट डेंसिटी थ्रू अ वायर इज वेरिंग विथ डिस्टेंस आर फ्रॉम द सेंटर एज जे इज इक्वल टू ए इन टू आर साउंड लाइक अ वेरी वेरी यू नो टायरिंग न्यू काइंड ऑफ प्रॉब्लम but it is a very very easy problem if you look at it very very carefully if you look at it minutely what is happening over here so they are given us an electrical conductor like which is nothing but a cylindrical wire which has the length l and radius r now what they are saying is even though it has a radius r like the current density is not uniform all along the radius the current density is varying from you know like from the center until every point at center is going to be zero because over here it is given as j is equal to a into r guys keep doing this problem this kind of problem you should do it you should put your pen on the paper and reply back guys keep doing these kind of problem never miss this kind of problem i mean you you will get it in some kind of competitive exams around this kind of concepts and not only that it will tune your concepts very well it will tune your concepts very well we do problems because it will tune your concepts very well this is not a confuse me challenge problem this is a plain challenge problem have a look at it over here this is a plain challenge problem where we are trying to find out the value of current okay find the electric current through a cylindrical wire of length l and radius r but the current density is varying from the center from the center as a into r if we move distance r the current density is going to be a into r in this case don't confuse it with area a is some constant until and unless explicitly told it's an area you should take it as area or else they, they may even give like b into r or something like that so it's a constant into r so it's not area into r and guys what is the current how you are going to do it can you simply multiply it by pi r square just put pi r capital r whole square see you need to carefully understand the varying quantity over here is current density now you need to know like what is the current at that each elemental point but a good thing is all along the radius all along the circumference or at that you know position r it is uniform so if, even though the current density is going to change all along this radius it is uniform what do you do you will assume there is a small elemental area dr like how we did before and then calculated that all along this place the current density is uniform but the current density is changing with varying radius so you basically multiply j or take a dot product but in this case you can simply multiply because the direction is not explicitly spoken the direction is not explicitly given it's basically you know j into a or the area in this case area is going to be 2 pi r dr when you are calculating it the area is going to be 2 pi r dr so remember this guys so it is going to be 2 pi r small r is what you are going to take while integrating it and guys quickly the answers guys answers 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 you must have the have had the answers by now in your mind and you should be you know like either posting it out or you know writing it down this is very very important it is very important that you know you do it along with me and understand the concepts really really well okay guys it's not just about understanding concepts you have to solve challenge problems to do it really well so it's a into r into 2 pi r dr so let's not put you know any like you know pen on this paper or anything how do we do it i know a is a constant okay it's 2 pi r dr so it's going to be 2 pi r square dr integrated from r to 0 what is it going to be 2 pi r cube once you integrate it it's going to be cube already know the answer over here but there should be like by 3 so 2 pi r cube by 3 into a is the answer actually it's going to be 2 pi r a into 2 pi r cube minus 0 But minus zero is basically two pi r cube by three, so it's a into two pi r cube. So this is the answer, guys. It's a very very simple one. We did the method for you know like a uniform current density before, but in this case the current density was varying the radius, and the answer is some, something like this. How do you calculate it? How do you compute this particular kind of in this particular kind of problems where the current density is varying the radius? So this is just a work. This is just working. I'm just working out in this place. You know how we did it before. 
so basically i took the you know the elemental area 2 pi r dr because all along r the current density is constant and then 2 pi r dr into ar because the current density is varying with radius so i multiplied them or took a dot product in this case the dot product they are like perpendicular that's what i am assuming and then it's a into 2 pi r square dr if you integrate it from r to 0 you get 2 pi r cube by 3 or pi r in this case it's like r cube by 3 and you do it from r to 0 so that's why there is a 0 over here it's a into 2 pi r cube by 3 simple isn't it now we'll understand something known as how these electrons behave in an isolated conductor so when i'm talking there's no current what what are you assuming are you thinking that there is no flow of electrons or the electrons are not moving electrons are staying stationary like that is what is told to us earlier right earlier in our classes we were told that you know electrons are going to stay stationary if at all no voltage is applied if voltage is applied the current would become v into ir which is true which is not false but the current is moving inside that conductor current is i'm sorry the electrons are moving inside the conductor electrons are moving constantly inside the conductor Okay guys, there is a thermal energy, there is an inner and you know, innate energy in that electrons. Until and unless you put to an absolute zero temperature, the electrons are moving. It's basically like the gas model. Drewd proposed this model. Drewd is the scientist who developed this thing. Drewd is the dude who developed this thing. But let's understand this model very carefully. What is this trying to say and what, how does, I mean, how does this electrons behave in nature? So we are thinking, you know, like when we are talking about no current, that means electrons are not flowing. But electrons are continuously moving inside the conductor. Or continuously, continuously, continuously moving inside the conductor. They are changing the position. But the issue is there are so many vacancies. So when the current on, when the electron is moving outside an atom, then that atom becomes positively charged. So there is, there is, you know, like a compound or something. You know, when the electron is coming out, that, that particular thing becomes positively charged. That when that particle becomes per positively charged, it is sort of, you know, attracting these electrons when they are moving around. And the electrons are also repelling themselves. They are continuously colliding, 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 colliding inside a given, you know, like a material. I hope you got this points, guys. Like, what I'm trying to say over here is, there is a thermal energy associated with electron. So this thermal energy gives it a velocity. You know, like, you know, kinetic energy is there, right? Like, just in gases, there are kinetic, just like as in gases, there are kinetic energy. There is also kinetic energy associated with electrons. So, these electrons are continuously moving inside this, any given material. And what is happening? Once this electron leaves that particle, that particle becomes positively charged. This particle are also creating some sort of, you know, like a viscosity, whatever you call it, like, you know, some, I'm just correlating it. I'm just giving you an analogy, but it's not exactly that there is a positive you know positive charge that is trying to attract electrons but electrons are repelling again they are moving inside they are moving out they are moving inside they are moving out they are moving in random directions due to the thermal energy and this thermal energy is proportional to temperature T and VRMS which is nothing but velocity of root root mean square velocity is proportional to under root of T Okay, you remember this from 3KT rule, right? 3KT by 2 is equal to half mv square, which means VRMS is equal to under root of 3KT by m. If you substitute the mass of electron, if you substitute the room temperature, T is equal to 300 Kelvin or 298 Kelvin, and you substitute the value of Boltzmann constant, you will get that the electrons are constantly moving at a very high speed that is 10 to the power 5 meters per second. Guys, this concept should be clear. You need not remember any values. What you need to remember over here is the electrons are constantly moving in a given, you know, like, an, uh, like a material, like see in this case, metal, especially in a metal, because that's where we are talking about metal. We are, when we are talking about conductor, we are talking about isolated conductor. That means there is no potential applied on the conductor. This, these three, three electrons inside this conductor is constantly and constantly moving at a very high speed. Okay guys. And now what happens is this thing is also going to create some sort of problem when you're going to apply potential, isn't it? We'll have a look at it. But before that we'll understand what is happening when I'm talking about no motion of electrons in the 
in an isolated conductor if the if there is a constant motion at that much speed then there should be like a very high value of current right but there is no current why there is no net current if you add all the velocities of all the electrons if you add all the velocities of all the electrons that is u1 u2 u3 u4 so on you will come to know that there is no net motion of electrons so in isolated conductor when you are adding all these velocities you will see that they cancel out each other even electrons themselves are moving such that the electrons themselves are moving such that they are not able to deliver any particular momentum in any direction they are cancelling it out each other and they are cancelling it out on their own as well so if you if you carefully see if you carefully take the average velocity or if you take the net velocity or net momentum of the electrons or the total momentum of the electrons it is zero if you don't apply any potential the electrons are in motion due to the innate thermal energy but they are not able to deliver any current because they are continuously you know like the vacant positive shells which are getting you know which are attracting the electron then they are letting them move they are attracting the electron letting them move so the net moment of charge is zero also this means this motion cannot create any electric field just like what we spoke before this motion cannot create any electric field and the u average or the velocity of the total velocity or the total momentum of the electrons inside a particular material like an isolated conductor is zero okay guys this should be really really clear when we are moving into this concept and this is one of the key concepts in you know to in your exams or even to your understanding of the basics of electricity and you know current and, and we will understand like how this works when we apply potential what happens so let's say i applied an electric field okay now let's say i have applied an external electric field on this isolated conductor so what is going to happen so if i apply an external electric field the charge should move logically because there is an electric field in in the opposite direction of the electric field if electric field is like this electrons has to or the negative charge just have to move in this direction they will accumulate at some you know surface it's a closed conductor it's an isolated system they will accumulate just like this you know let's say i have applied an electric field e in this direction then these negative charges will accumulate over here the positive charges will accumulate over here in the direction of the electric field this will create an induced field isn't it guys so this will create an induced field so what is going to happen the net the net field or the total field the total electric field is going to be zero they are going to accumulate until they are able to cancel out the external electric field they have to cancel out this external electric field when it's an open system or an isolated system and there is a conductor and you apply an electric field on it then you will see that this charges will accumulate until they can cancel out this you know then for a short time there is movement of you know like the charges and a creation of induced field and when this induced field is created what happens they will they will they will be created until i mean they'll keep on increasing until they are able to cancel out the external field so what is happening when i am applying you know electric field like this charges are accumulating this charges are accumulating and they are creating an induced field this induced field is making the net field as zero because they will only be created the charges one will only move as long as there is an electric field once the electric field becomes zero the accumulation will stop so this is also the reason you must have read in your electrostatics or you must have you know heard that that you know like even you apply an electric field there wouldn't be any electric field inside a conductor which is true which is totally totally true isn't it guys isn't it so now we'll see a case what will happen if we apply a potential in a closed system let's say i connect a battery to the same conductor and i connect a wire to this battery and conductor so i'm what i'm doing over here i'm connecting a wire and making it a closed loop system i'm connecting it with the wire closed loop system is a closed loop it's a closed loop system it's a closed system it's not isolated conductor anymore and what i'm doing doing over here is i'm applying a potential i'm using a battery to apply the potential i'm creating an potential gradient so there would be a field but now if you notice it if you notice it i'll do a thing i'll just you know remove all this you know highlights and you'll notice that 
you know, the charges have started flowing because the charges are not accumulating anymore they have a place to flow you know this wire is letting them flow you got this point right the charges are flowing so this point should be clear now you understood that the charges have started flowing when i'm giving it an external electric field in a closed loop system or i'm you know connecting a battery if i'm connecting a battery to this conductor the charges will start to flow and now the charges cannot accumulate anymore because it's a closed loop system the charges have to flow the charges have to flow the charges have to flow and what would happen that means the charges are not accumulating means the net field is not zero if there is a field if there is an electric field if there is a net field that is not zero that is non zero then what happens then these electron should be accelerating these electron should be moving they cannot be you know just be dealing with the thermal energy they are also dealing with an external electric energy or an external field which is going to drive this electrons and how do we calculate it what is the acceleration so we know this external electric field is going to create a force q into e okay guys this external electric field is going to create a force q into e and how do you find out the acceleration ma is equal to q into e okay ma is equal to q into e or f is equal to ma and you divide them by mass you divide this qe force by mass and then you will get acceleration if it's an electron it's minus e q is equal to minus e so that would become minus e e e external by m that is charge of electron into electric field divided by m in the opposite direction is going to be the acceleration of electrons because in a conductor electron is conducting okay and the total field in a closed loop system when you connect a battery and wire the charges cannot accumulate anymore they will start moving the net electric field will take place there will be this external field driving the electrons guys ho hope you understood this if not do ask me see this electrons are moving in a closed loop system that is what is happening and now once i told you this electrons are moving how are they moving or do they have do they get the potential of entire acceleration if i'm talking about acceleration that means velocity should be increasing 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 and increasing but is it really increasing what is happening inside this you know inside this magical world of atoms and electrons what is happening over there what is happening such that you know like you know i'm not able to get you know increasing current even with you know at constant potential what is happening such that i am not able to get the increase in current with in, i mean a constant potential what is happening inside the electrons so inside the atoms or inside the molecules such that i am not able to get this increasing current so let's understand it let's understand it from an atomic point of view so this electrons are moving due to the applied field i have applied a field this electrons have started moving So electrons are moving in this direction. The field is applied in this direction. But I told you in the beginning there are vacant shells. Even if the electrons will start, you know, deaccumulating and accumulating, these deaccumulation points will create, you know, positive charges. Then these electrons have to move from one shell to another shell. One shell to another shell. They're colliding. They're colliding. They're getting, you know, captivated in this positive shells and moving, 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 and moving. so even though i have given it an acceleration it suddenly gets decelerated even though i am giving it an acceleration it suddenly gets decelerated and then just like how you saw in like you know when you drop an object from a specific height it attains you know like a terminal velocity you know an object drop from a very large height due to the air viscosity you know it is attaining a terminal velocity similarly in this case it is going to attain a drift velocity it is going to attain but you have to understand this thing there it may not be varying here the velocity is varying with time even though you are applying the potential but we are taking it as an average but it is a very similar concept where there is you know 
at you know a position varying viscosity due to this positively charged shells and they are sort of creating electrons to move in a particular pattern which does not let them accelerate fully because if i had given a you know a constant potential and the electrons are free as what we were thinking earlier these electrons should be accelerating infinitely after certain point of time but they are not happening because there is a continuous you know inside the shells of these atoms there is a continuous collisions or you can call it collisions or you know an attraction and repulsion due to the negative positive and the negative spots and there are many such vacant spaces this is just 1d representation this you know uh, like animation is just a 1d representation but there are many 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 such spots so when i'm talking about many 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 such spots that means overall system if you imagine in 3d they are also behaving like this hence the electrons are not accelerating and they have achieved an average drift velocity okay guys this is a concept from looking at it from the you know like a microscopic point of view but now we will work around this we'll work around this we'll work around this to understand the concept better but before that i am going to challenge your intuition this time i am not going to confuse you i am going to challenge your intuition your basic understanding of this concept it's only about this concept carefully look at this problem this is about this concept which of the following is true the average velocity of electrons is zero in an isolated conductor the average velocity of the electrons is not zero when an external field is applied on an isolated conductor the velocity of individual electron is non zero the rms velocity of electron is not zero very basic question around this concept around this concept only it's a very easy one average velocity of the electrons is zero in an isolated conductor we are talking about velocity see we are talking about two things over here i think velocity and speed no 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 we are just talking about average velocity okay the average velocity of the electrons is zero in an isolated conductor which is true if you take if you average it out it is zero the average velocity of electrons is not zero when external electric field is applied which is not true we saw that right over a period of time after some time what happens the charge accumulation starts and they are not moving they are still facing the same old thing so this is not true this is false the average velocity of electrons is zero in an isolated conductor the velocity of individual electrons is non zero which is also true if you take a velocity at any instant they are not zero over the period of time it is zero but at an instant the velocity is not zero because the direction is also changing isn't it the rms of the electron velocity is not zero which is true we just saw it we just derived it and it is not zero be careful about this these kind of questions can be given to just confuse you for a moment and you know what many people will mess up with this kind of questions i mean many examinations many competitive examinations will mess up with this kind of questions let's challenge our intuition again i think i already spoke out this concept so you must be pretty aware of it i made you you know aware and you know mindful of the problem but let it be which of the following is true the average speed of the electron is not zero in an isolated conductor the net velocity and speed are zero but it is obvious to you now because there is a net velocity and speed given to you or or zero inside an isolated conductor the average speed of the electrons is not zero in an isolated conductor the net velocity and speed are zero in an isolated conductor since the charges accumulate the electrons cannot speed up when cannot have speed and the electrons are at rest when no electric field is applied is this true guys is this true that electrons are, are at rest electrons are not at absolute rest so this is false since the charges accumulate the electrons cannot speed up which is false as well because electrons are moving okay 
when we are talking about the thermal properties of electrons the electrons are moving be it accumulated or not accumulated because after certain point of accumulation still still there are free electrons which are not bound by the electric field even then they are moving even under electric field they are moving we just saw that how they are moving and the net velocity and speed are zero in an isolated conductor the net velocity is zero but not the net speed so this is also false electrons are not at rest electrons can speed up and i mean they do have a speed and then the net velocity may be zero but the net speed is not zero so the first one is correct they do have an average speed electrons do have an average speed the average speed of electrons is not zero in an isolated conductor so this was pretty easy this was just you know challenging your intuition which was very very easy which had no difficulty in explaining the concept of the thermal velocity the inherent properties and you know like you know properties of electrons in you know like if you imagine it like a gas or like you know in a brownian motion so like you know brownian motion to say is that same thing if you heat up the gases they move this way that way and even the gases are moving constantly in you know random motion the gas molecules they have just put in a color in this case we can't put in a color but we have visualized it how it looks like now next challenge my intuition problem which of the following is true every electron is moving in an isolated conductor due to magnetic field electrons in a conductor are moving due to the inherent thermal energy you know this is correct you don't even have to take the time electrons are moving in an isolated conductor or not moving or moving in an isolated conductor or not moving at all okay this seems like a false statement or moving in an isolated conductor or not moving at all Let's ignore this for now. I think this is just you know like a type typo error or like you know typing mistake. When voltage is applied, the electron starts drifting in the direction of field. We just studied this. When we apply a voltage, the electron will start drifting. Okay, electrons are moving in isolated conductor. So C is also false. Just ignore this part. Electrons are moving in an isolated conductor due to the inherent thermal energy. So option B is correct. Every electron are moving in an isolated conductor due to magnetic field. That is the option A. Sorry guys. So every electron is moving in an isolated conductor due to magnetic field. That is false. That is not correct. Not due to magnetic field, but due to thermal energy. Due to the inherent thermal energy. That absolute zero electrons are not moving. at least that's the assumption or that's like you know the hypothesis and when voltage is applied electron starts drifting that is true but not in the direction of field so this is also false okay guys this must have made your concept pretty clear by now you must be clear about you know the inherent thermal velocity what is you know current density what is current how do we derive the current for given a varying current density how do we derive a current for given a geometry l shape i mean uh, given also at current density and what is drift velocity but now we'll work a little bit around drift velocity but before that we'll have a look at another problem this is a very very easy problem this would not take even you know like even few seconds to do it so when a voltage is applied to the end of an conductor in a closed loop system then the electron starts accelerating smoothly in the opposite direction does it accelerate smoothly no electron starts to achieve the drift velocity which is kind of true it's not totally true but which is kind of true electrons are drifting with the velocity but are still affected by the nearby vacant positive charges okay guys this is totally true and the net electric field is not zero anymore which is also true okay guys so we have tuned our concepts now we'll get into like a little bit you know further into this concept or a little bit deep into this concept we saw this electrons are moving in you know like in an atom they are you know getting hit by some shell then getting hit by some shell they are repelling themselves then there has to be certain relaxation time there has to be certain time during which this is happening these collisions or these kind of you know movement is happening we call that as the average relaxation time 
and this path but we call the average path as the mean free path because it's mean it's mean free path we denote it by lambda so tau is the average relaxation time and lambda is the mean free path now what we'll do is we'll apply a little bit of kinematics we'll apply a little bit of kinematics and see how this works in our you know the motion of charges concept so but before that we'll understand what is happening so they they told us i mean this we'll take that you know initial velocities of different electrons are u1 u2 u3 u4 and so on till un so there are n number of electrons and there are they have like different initial velocities u1 u2 u4 u3 so on till un and the final velocities of different electrons are v1 v2 v3 v4 so on till vn now we know the acceleration we know the average acceleration all these electrons which is nothing but we calculated before which is proportional to electric field but in the opposite direction for the electrons which is nothing but acceleration is equal to minus ee which is where e is the charge of the electron value of the charge of electron into e electric field by mass ee by m or you can simply divide the electric field by mass and then multiply into the charge of electron that would be the acceleration on each charges so what we will do now is we'll apply a little bit of kinematics to understand what is this drift velocity so we have been talking about drift velocity but how do we find out the value of drift velocity so that's the concept right now so what you're going to do is you're going to simply apply newton's first equation of motion and take up you know like an average velocity or you can also take a net velocity something like that in that case you would get an n over here you can basically take down the sign if if i add you know if i add v is equal to u plus at for all of this electrons i'll still get you know the same thing which would be like you know n into acceleration i can take this n on the denominator for the velocity side and then i would find out the drift velocity but but remember this guys we know that u1 plus u2 plus u3 plus u4 before applying any potential was zero so that would be zero now they have a certain drift velocity that is going to be nothing but acceleration into time the average drift velocity is going to be acceleration into the relaxation time the time between collisions or the time between what do you call it like the moment so now the concept of us for the drift velocity has become clear which is nothing but acceleration into time acceleration is e by mt this minus sign is appearing because electrons are moving in the negative direction of the or the opposite direction of the electric field now let's do a little bit of you know understanding or let's understand a little bit about the mean free path mean free path is nothing but drift velocity divided by drift velocity divided by tau the relaxation time the time between the collisions so now what is happening in this case we already know from here that the magnitude of mean free path is e e by m value of charges in electric field by m if you take this magnitude if you take the magnitude of e into e by m you will get the mean free path It was easy. So now you have got a very good conceptual clarity around drift velocity. Why we are arriving to drift velocity? Why necessarily drift velocity? Why not acceleration? Why not complete acceleration? And what is happening inside? You know, like an atom, even when there is no external potential applied or a potential applied, what happens in an isolated conductor? What happens in like a closed loop system or like where you connect a battery to an isolated conductor? and what is happening like using a wires okay you understood that point and what is happening when we are like you know working around charges where the charge you know assuming a hypothetical problem where just the charge is moving what is current density more importantly now what we'll do is we'll make use of this you know drift velocity to derive current density and current which are the crucial components and which we are going to make use of it in the next upcoming lectures like ohm's law and guys this is like laying the foundation for starting out with the motion of charges just now we saw that we were dealing with motion of charges we applied kinematics equations so now let's get into solving it for the you know like uh, current and current density but before that what we'll do is we'll have a look at what happens if you want to derive it in terms of voltages because in this particular you know like syllabus or in this particular topic we are going to deal with 
you know voltages and what you simply know from your past is like you know basically it's e cross d dx or e dx and then it is nothing but minus e into l voltage is going to be minus e into l which means drift velocity when expressed in terms of voltages that is going to be the same value divided by l which is ev ml ev divided by ml where m is the mass of the electron and l mass of any charges it can be but mass of the electron in this case ev by ml where e is the charge of the electron v is the potential or the voltage of the battery m is the mass of the electron l is the distance between this conductor is the length of this conductor is the length between the flow of charges and tau is the relaxation time you know it from before now what we'll do is once like we have seen this now we can you know get comfortably into the concept of how what is like current density we'll start with current density okay we'll not start with current in this case you are going to start with current density in terms of drift velocity which is going to be very easy if you think intuitively even without looking at this you know video you can simply guess given an electron density per unit volume and given a drift velocity given a charge of an electron given an area of conductor how would you find out the current density it's really really simple guys just think about the definition what is the definition of you know like current density forget everything just think about the definition or think about what is conceptually perceived like what is happening over here what is current density current density is rate of flow of charges per unit area so rate of flow of charges would be n into e into vd per unit area because n is nothing but electron dens electron density per unit volume electron density itself would say it's per unit volume but we are writing it specifically because we are talking about current density and then not specifying it in terms of unit volume okay so n is nothing but current density per unit volume where j is equal to n into e total number of charges which is changing in an area with respect to time as respect with the proportional to drift velocity okay guys this 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 concept should be really really clear this is just a conceptual thing there is nothing we are deriving over here we are just basically multiplying the amount of charges passing through unit time unit area aren't we can't you just you know even work around the dimension analysis but that is not the way to do it understand the concept understand the concept clearly that what we are trying to do over here is we are basically finding out the current density by using the number of electrons flown in that unit volume and multiplying it because it is you know if if i give it a drift velocity let's say there is a constant drift velocity in this direction then what is happening the time it is also you know moving the time it is moving in, in, in around the, i mean sorry across the cross section with time if it is moving across a cross section that means there is a current and what will be the current density and e into v drift it's a very conceptual thing and for current what would you do guys it's very simple j into a isn't it it's basically j into a it is basically j into a that is it that is it that is all you have to do n e a into v isn't it simple guys isn't it really really conceptual and simple This entire current density. Even if I haven't told you about, you know, the formula of current density, we could have, you know, just got this. We did not have even have to derive the concept of current density. I mean, sorry, the drift velocity to work around this. Once I have told you this acceleration is not possible, the electrons are going to achieve a drift velocity, average drift velocity. Then you already know that current density is nothing but proportional to drift velocity, and current is also proportional to drift velocity. The difference is only going to be. multiplication of area and also remember that uh, current is not going to you know be affected by much by the vector vectorial part of it whereas current density is going to be affected by the vectorial part of drift velocity and now also the thing given an electron density per unit volume you would simply do is like multiply this drift velocity into this electron density per unit volume and multiply it by the charge because we have to find out the charge i mean variation of the charge value Not just the number of charges. We just saw that before. 
so guys we'll do a small problem only you know like couple or two or three of the problems and that would be very useful in understanding this concept since we have completed this concept we should not leave this concept we should you know like you know tune our brains to understand the concept it is very very important and keep working along with me keep commenting stay interactive that is very important to you know understand the concepts i'll be able to see what is going wrong and able to comment on comment on it or you know what you can understand it as well in the future once you have commented you know like this has gone wrong and you know you need to correct it you need to correct it guys so let's get started with the problem in a circular wire with cross section r free electrons travel with a drift velocity v when the current i flows through the wire what is the current in another wire so they are talking about initially a wire with a cross section radius r and there are free electrons with drift velocity v so they are drifting they are moving casually i told you in the beginning guys these are not you know in a smooth motion they are drifting they are moving slowly they are traveling very slowly with a drift velocity v when a current i flows through the wire so there is a current i flowing through the wire which is given as you know the value to us when there is a drift velocity v we just saw this concept and there is a radius r now what i am doing is i'm doubling the drift velocity okay i'm doubling the drift velocity what is happening to the current i'm keeping that wire or halving the radius actually i'm halving the radius of that you know i'm halving the radius of the of the material so there is a circular wire initially with radius r now i'm taking half the radius half that radius now what i'm doing is i'm halving the radius but doubling the drift velocity what happens guys what happens just think about it very very carefully does the current remain constant or the current changes so let's say you know like half the radius that means the area has gone down by 1/4 okay it's a cylindrical wire it's a circular wire which means the area has become 1/4 what about current density we are specifically talking about current and current density in this case current and current density okay current density becomes twice that's true right the drift velocity has doubled that means current and current density should also double current remains constant it is not possible current as you know you know like uh, current density has changed but you have also half the radius which means it is 2 into so j by j uh, i is equal to j into a if you half the radius that means the amount of current that was flowing right now would be 1/4 because you are you have cut down the area by a quarter so that would become earlier j into a by 4 but now this j this new j j dash let's call it is 2j okay current would become half so it was 1/4 the area so current has reduced by quarter but you doubled the drift velocity that means the current would become half but the current density has become twice current won't remain constant and current wouldn't double so these both are wrong wasn't it simple really simple now let's get into the next one this is a confuse me problem which means they are going to confuse you voltage v is applied at the ends of a metal wire of length l and radius r on doubling the radius and drift velocity what would what would happen to the drift velocity okay guys so you should apply the intuition right now about the drift velocity what is drift velocity dependent upon i am doubling the radius does that affect my drift velocity voltage is applied at the ends of the metal wire of length l and radius r on doubling the radius r the drift velocity would become would it become half would it become four times would it double or would it remain constant it would remain constant it does not matter how you vary the area drift velocity even if you have very small area of the same material and you know you are given you know a constant voltage the drift velocity is not going to change you take a big area big area bigger area drift velocity is not going to change you need to understand this concept very very critically that drift velocity is independent of area given a constant voltage 
and a constant material. Now let's get into the confuse me problem number two. I mean, confuse me problem number two of this drift velocity concept. Voltage V is applied at the ends of a metal wire of length L and radius R. On doubling the voltage, then what happens? You don't have to even think about it. You, you can simply answer this concept without even you know looking at the options. The voltage is applied at the ends of a metal wire of length L and R. You haven't changed anything you know with regard to the dimensions of that material, I mean at that metal wire or let's say the size of the metal wire, you haven't prolonged it, you haven't extended it, you have just kept it constant. On doubling the voltage, what is happening over here? If you double the voltage, what is going to happen to the drift velocity and current density? They would also double, won't they? They won't remain constant. You have given more of, you know, like an electric field. They would have to, you know, attain a greater drift velocity. And that greater drift velocity is directly proportional to voltage. You remember, you know, VD is equal to, don't go by formula, guys. Don't go by formula for conceptual questions. It will lead to a great pitfall. Be it in your understanding of the concept, be it in your exams, be it when you are confused and stressed in a situation like exam. Don't go by the formulas until and unless necessary. Try to go by the concepts. Concepts will, you know, tune your entire brain differently than formulas do. Formulas are about memory. Concepts are about understanding, you know, the physics, the nature as such. Things become very, very easy once you understand the concept. You can you know, keep small things in mind like proportional, etc, etc, what is current density, what is current, what is electron, but it should be only those fundamental things. You are building the block in your brain using these fundamental things. That is more important. Okay guys, so voltage is doubling means drift velocity is also doubling because the field has doubled, isn't it? The field has doubled, the drift velocity will double, the current density will also double, double as the drift velocity will double. So it was really simple guys. Now we'll talk about a problem where a wire has a non-uniform cross-sectional area. So at A it has lesser of a cross-sectional area. Now at B it has a more of a cross-sectional area. What I'm telling you is there is a steady current that is flowing through this, you know, like cylinder or this is generally called as frustum. But whatever it is, this cylinder and they are of non-uniform cross-sectional area. The cross-sectional area is varying with distance. With distance, the cross-sectional area is varying. Then which of the following is true? Steady current is told to you. Somehow the current is made steady. The current is steady throughout the material. Throughout the material, the current is steady. It has a non-uniform cross-sectional area. This, you know, this, you know, cylinder has non-uniform cross-sectional area. Okay, what would happen when the current is flowing from A to B? A steady current is flowing from A to B. Would the drift velocity remain constant in this case? Think carefully guys, think carefully. Something has been manipulated over here. What has been manipulated over here? A constant current has been given. A steady current has been maintained throughout the material. Okay. That means the drift velocity would not remain constant. A steady current, what is the dependence of, you know, like area and drift velocity? So let's say I is constant, current I is constant. You do this N E A V D. Okay. I is constant, area increases. Then V D should decrease. A increases, V D should decrease. The velocity, drift velocity should keep on decreasing, 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 decreasing as and when the area increases because it is steady current. So from A to B, the drift velocity should decrease. It would not increase. It would not increase and decrease. This is also wrong. It would not increase. It's like, you know, just, you know, remembering the concept, writing down the mathematical equation and equating it. So guys, I think we learned a lot of lot of concepts today. It was amazing session. Loved it guys, loved it. I hope you too loved it. Keep liking the videos, keep sharing the videos. Don't you know constrain the knowledge to yourself. Keep sharing it, brainstorm with your friends, brainstorm about this channel, this you know concepts. You know, discuss the concepts guys. 
discuss the concepts more importantly share the video and discuss the concepts have a look at the videos and guys keep smiling keep smiling and keep smiling and you have to work hard to achieve your success you have to really really work hard and if you are talking about exams you have to work hard even then i'll tell you you know what you're learning concepts do it very coolly do it with a very calm mind enjoy the classes enjoy the classes don't take it as a burden enjoy it think about it you're learning something new something amazing something that you will be able to use use it in your life of course you'll be able to use it in your life as and when you keep learning with us and guys enjoy the classes and guys one more thing you may go on to like play store and app store and you may want to download the unacademy learning app and attend our free live special classes with us and guys one more thing if you are looking for test series and if you are looking for live quizzes if you are looking for you know live lectures structured learning and as well as you know like doubt clearing sessions you may want to get a subscription and if you are looking for iit je you may want to get the iit je part of it as your goal and guys you can make use of my coupon to get a 10% discount and guys stay safe enjoy 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 physics enjoy current and electricity enjoy life stay smiling stay safe stay tuned to the channel subscribe to the channel do like the channel stay safe guys i'll see you the next time bye bye